Hey what's up guys, Crisco here and welcome to another Crix Visuals awesome tutorial. How are you guys doing? Any cool projects going on? Let me know. Today we're going to take a look at uh, a few cool stages of setting up an establishing shot with visual effects and a few tips and tricks there to make it happen. So with that said, let's take a look at the clip. cool huh uh, the planet scene especially is my favorite I don't know it's just the atmosphere makes it really cool uh, the project files are in the creatics vault guys link in the description consider joining it's an amazing library of projects with VFX SFX and uh, footages included so you guys can play around do your own thing also check the creatics store for cool assets like the lots pack which is a fan favorite and more awesome stuff so with that said guys Fire up After Effects and let's get started! Okay guys, so here we are with the After Effects and I have the Critics Vault project downloaded and ready to go. So, here is the planet scene which I'm gonna explain to you guys how we make it, but within the project you have the science fiction beam as well and the castle from the Harry Potter dual, uh, not dual, <laughs> Diet of Blood um, concept film. So, let's get started guys, uh, I'm gonna close everything and do things from scratch mostly so you can see it step by step. So I have my clip right here, right? So it's a drone clip from the Mavic Air and uh, it's a very cool shot, but it's a very simple shot. But as, as you can see guys, the camera flies towards um, these mountains, so we need to track our scene. And this is basically the most important step of any visual effects um, composition. When the camera is moving, your assets need to move with the camera as well. But as you can see guys here, we have a lot of like water surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, the 2D tracking technique within After Effects to track my clip, which is very simple guys. So I'm going to right click on my uh, footage, go to track and stabilize and then track motion. And it's going to open up this little cool thing. So I'm going to zoom in here. And you see I have track point one, but if you go right here within After Effects, you can have the tracker settings. And I want to click rotation as well as scale because the camera is moving inwards within the scene. And I'm going to find some cool little spots to track, like as you can see right here. Now, in terms of tracking spots, guys, find something um, that is easily distinguishable. Now, the After Effects will do a pretty damn good job um, with finding out what you want to track but also guys very important thing you need to track in relation to where you want to place assets if i want to track these trees right here they're obviously going to move way faster than that ones because they're closer to the camera but because i want to place my planets over there i should track that section so with my clips with my um two tracking points selected i'm going to go right here and then track forwards and then After Effects is going to start tracking backwards. And then once that's done, which is right there, you can see if I zoom in here, we have tracking data. Now the movement is extremely slow as you can see, but even something slow, uh, very small like this is going to make, if you don't have it, it's going to make it look really fake. So track forwards again. I already tracked this guys, but let's do it again just to make sure you guys uh, don't get confused with how uh, 2D tracking works. So once the clip is finished uh, being tracked, what you need to do then is create a null object. So how you do that is you go to layer, new, null object. Once you have your new null object, you can see it popping up right there. You're going to go to edit target, select that specific null, press OK, and then apply. X and Y, yes. So now you have a very cool null that is stacked um, to your scene. Now I'm going to delete this null because I already have a null ready to go. Now that you have your tracking data, it's really easy to start um, setting up your VFX scene. 
Now, of course, you have to do a lot of compositing, which is extremely important, but that's where everything starts, basically. And I have three different compositions to kind of show you the stages of a VFX landscape shot. Um, stage one would be to just put a, a, an asset in, like a castle, and that would be it. Second stage would be to put um, something like a castle, let's say, in this case, planets, which are 2D comps and they're not animated, basically, like the castle and the planets are not animated assets. But then you can incorporate an animated asset like a drone, for example, in this uh, scenario, to start blending in even more assets and uh, make your scene richer in terms of visual effects. And then lastly, I have a third stage, which is basically a 2D asset, an animated asset and then an even cooler uh, asset like a sci-fi beam, you can have smoke, you can have rain, you can have so many things basically. But I think you guys get the point. And of course, within the Creatix Vault project, you have all of these assets ready for you to play with. Back to our planet scene, I'm gonna deselect everything and start from scratch. So I'm gonna bring in the planets. Once you bring in a, uh, a clip, you need to put, place it within your scene and then grab this tool with, and then whip it to your null. What that's going to do is it's going to parent that asset, that layer with that tracking data and it's going to follow the clip one by one. If you don't see this, don't worry, toggle the switch, but your little thing there should always be in that spot. So with that said, now you're ready to start compositing your asset in terms of its dynamic range, contrast, colors, and everything. So if I close all of my compositing effects off, you guys can see how the asset looks from the get-go, right? Which is kind of silly because it does not add up with the scene at all. But don't worry guys, because I have a few tips and tricks to show you. So let's take a look. What I do first is I'm trying to uh, figure out the dynamic range of the asset. And that is really straightforward to do because what you do is you look at your scene and you look at your blacks and your highlights. And as you can see, straight on, this is way too contrasty. So what I've done is I took the curves effect from going effects, color correction and curves. And with the RGB, I play around with the contrast. Then I duplicated that effect to make it even more evident because this scene is really, um, it does have a lot of contrast because it's overcast, but now you can see where we get going, right? Now the contrast, it starts to look pretty good, but the colors are off. So then I go to effects, color correction, hue and saturation, which is this effect right here. If I power, and what you can see guys, I dropped the master hue all the way down because look how we have, we don't have a lot of color detail. And then I changed the, the reds to more of like a tree color right here. And that comes with like, it depends, right? Uh, it depends on your color grading and what you want to achieve. But to me, to my eyes, this looks quite good. Uh, atm atmosphere wise, coloring wise and everything wise. It just, it just ticks my boxes <laughs> um, basically. And lastly, because we incorporated a dude a 2D asset that is basically an image. If I zoom in here, guys, you can see how crisp the planet is. But when you scroll down, look at the trees over here. They're not crisp at all. Now, this was shot with the Mavic Air and it's a 4K comp, etc., etc., and it looks really good in motion. But when you see things as a picture, it's a different story. And as you can tell, guys, this and this do not add up at all. So, what you need to do is basically match the sharpness of your assets to the sharpness of your clip. So what I did there is I went to effects, blur and sharpen, and I just did fast box blur because it's fast in rendering, etc. and it's not like that um, complicated. And I brought it in and I look how I just put a slight blur, 0 0.5. And if I toggle it off and on, you can see what it does. Now, sometimes it's not very easy um, to identify if your blur effect matches your uh, footage one by one. So have a bit of like a preview or like render a small portion of the scene to make sure that it makes sense in your eyes. And therefore, hopefully, <laughs> it would make sense in your viewer's eyes. 
So that would be the planet. And then I just duplicated it, put it in the background, played with the... Again, change, really change the contrast uh, by playing with the curve to make it match. And that would be it, guys. That is the exact same technique to incorporate the castle or the sci-fi tower without the beam, of course. Now, moving on. What I have here, I have a pre-rendered asset, which is the drone, basically. And I did the exact same thing. I dropped it in the scene, linked it to the null, played with the curves adjustment, as you guys can see, to make the contrast uh, match. Played a bit with some lumetry effects, as well as hue and saturation, like we did with the planet, to make sure that the colors uh, make sense. The last thing that I did is incorporate some distortion effects uh, to the drone. Now, in this one, I used Video Copilot's uh, plugin called Heat Distortion, because it's the best, but unfortunately, it is a paid plugin. But I chose to include it in case you guys have it and you want to play around and see the settings and what I've done. In case you do not, you uh, there is an effect actually that's called Turbulent Displays within After Effects and you can use that. It's not going to be as good, unfortunately, as the plugin, but it is going to make a difference basically. But let's move back to the technique which I want you guys to focus on. When you have assets that might emit heat, like a drone moving through space or like fire, smoke or like a sci-fi beam, it's really cool to incorporate some distortion effects because it will help blend everything in and catch the eye of the viewer, even though it's a very slight effect. We do not want to overdo it. So in this case, I brought in heat distortion, did my settings, which of course it really depends on a scene by scene basis, like you do not just copy and paste them, but in this case, these are the settings. And what I did then is I put some masks, as you can see, two of them, the first mask, is the main effect and this the second mask basically blends the tail of the effect and the drone out of it out of it out of the scene with feathering so if, you, if i press f you can see my feathering values and how they are used and that would be it guys now the drone emits a bit of heat as it moves through space and it makes for a cooler overall effect i would say lastly i have a bit of a vignette to center the frame in the eye and then some contrast a very slight like to give it a slight pop in the image now guys if i move on to the sci-fi beam composition it's the exact same story with the sci-fi beam assets incorporated now again guys just to make a bit of a summary first track your clip using the right tracking method then bring in your assets either 2d or motion graphics or anything and do keep in mind, guys, that After Effects is mostly a compositing software. You do need to have the right assets to make things work. But then you need to start layering new effects and new visuals to make sure that everything blends together in one image. And it looks realistic, basically. So after you bring your assets in, you need to do uh, color matching, dynamic range, and things like that. And that's what I showed you guys. And that would be it, basically. Okay guys, so that's a cool wrap. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and you learned something. Uh, check the other tutorials and of course the links in the description like Instagram and things like that. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Until then, stay creative.